Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Prophetic Voice of Victory. I am your host, Apostle James Duncan, and my co-host, Prophetess Morrissey Miles Jenkins, is there in Texas. Today, you see, I am on a, a mission. I'm on a mission. Praise God. And, and uh, we know that when we are in journeys, our life is a journey. And so we bless God today for all of you. As you come on, we want you to like, tag, share with your, with your, uh, your groups, your friends. Let them know that we are on the prophetic voice of victory. Praise God. I, today we are continuing this year uh, in the topic of doors, doors. And uh, when we talk about doors, some doors can be shut and some doors can be open. But I want to say to you, if the door is shut, God, Jesus, always find a way to open the doors. Uh, some places that you had access, and there's no more access because of whatever the, the circumstances uh, are, the doors are shut. But I've come to tell you, Jesus can go behind shut doors and put you behind shut doors. They might blot you out of situations, out of circumstances. You're trying to get something. You try to get a loan. You try to get a, a, a job or an assignment or a promotion. You're trying to get something that, that belongs to you and the door is shut. They have put a blockade against you. They are, they are put embargoes against you. They are blocking your progress. I come to tell you, whatever is blocked can be, can be open. They can be removed. If there are walls, they can be torn down. If there are, if there are doors, access point, gates, they can be open. And even Jesus walked through walls. And so we're going to look at walls, blockages, doors that are shut. And God have find a way because Jesus said, I am the way and I am the door. He knows how to get behind closed doors. He now to tear down, destroy walls. He knows how to get behind closed doors and walls and, and where opportunities, where your provision is. And so we're going to look at it. Joshua chapter 6. Are we going to look at verse number 1 and number 2? Pray, Prophet, this more so you can read. Okay, just, um, Joshua chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. Now Jericho was straight shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Amen. And we, yeah. so, so, amen. We, we are looking at the situation here. The children of Israel, God is uh, uh, was going before them and make cricket paths straight. God was going before them and uh, and, the, and he was working with them to destroy the enemies. Now, when they came to Jericho, uh, the Bible says it, it was shut. Everything was shut up, but they had to go through Jericho to get the provision. The provision was, was beyond the walls. Their breakthroughs were beyond the walls. Their blessing were beyond the walls. Everything that God has preordained and predestined for them was beyond the walls with some shut doors they it, nothing it was so it was so sealed like nothing can enter or nothing coming in nothing can come in or nothing can go out it was sealed it seems like it's over everything is over now they are not get the provision that God has stole for them because it seems like it's over. And many times we 
try situations and get in. Why I do this? Why there is not a breakthrough? Why there is not an open door? Why am I suffering this situation? Why am I? Go it seems everything, everywhere I try, the thing is blocked. The thing is blocked. There is no way. Because the Bible says the doors were shut or Jericho was shut up because of the children of Israel. Sometimes first because you're a believer. You believe in Christ Jesus. The enemy, because of fear, has shut some doors up. Has shut, some, shut off some access points, some blessings. Shut off some things that, you, that God has given you. It is seen that the thing is shut off. But I've come to tell you, nothing can be shut off. Nothing can be shut if God wants it to be open. Okay, well, we see. So, as the boss was saying, hopefully he'll get back into the room. Hoping that he'll be able to get his connection back. Just bear with us just a minute. Oh, here he comes. Oh. Yes. Oh, okay, we got you. Now. Right. When God said, This is your time, this is your season, this is your hour, and this is the year of the open doors, this is the time for you to get access to the things that I've prepared for you, I've given unto you already. This is the time for you to have the breakthrough. This is the time for you to get married. This is the time for you to get promoted. This is the time for you uh, to bear fruit in your business, in your ministry. This is the time I set in place, but there seems walls, there seems, there seems doors, there seems that uh, the access is cut off. When you think, I was gonna get help from this place, there's no help. When you think I'm, I will get help from that one, there's no help. It seems like you're cut off. Everything is shut. God, God, give them the strategy. And the strategy was for them to, you read the strategy and they had to follow the blueprint of God. And so God wants you to follow his word, follow the blueprint that he has given unto you for whatever situation and circumstance you're, get, you're dealing with. And when, after Jesus was resurrected, the disciples were locked up because again, they were fearing, they were fearing what was taking place. You see, fear causes doors to shut. Fear causes opportunities to be blocked fear causes causes uh, 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 the enemy to try to hinder you because the bowels of fear had torment fear causes you not to walk in faith and so because they were fearful the 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 uh, uh, the apostles them because they were locked up in this room. They were locked up after Jesus was resurrected. They were locked up in the room. But Jesus walked through the walls. There is no walls, no shut door that God cannot get you in. He cannot get you in. Amen, Prophet is mercy. I'm not, we're not hearing you. Absolutely. And so there was a strategy um, sent from heaven that was in place. The commander of the Lord met with Joshua and began to give him some instructions of what he's supposed to do in order to get the breakthrough. And so there was an interception. Uh, there was a, a, an interception between heaven and earth. And so the commander of the Lord had to come. His presence came and uh, gave Joshua the backing that he needed in order to go in and to possess the land. But look, the Lord had promised the children of Israel. He had promised them Jericho, just in the same way that God had promised you a house. God has promised you a promotion. He has promised you to have a child. 
right? There are things that he has promised that you may feel like this thing is not happening and is not coming to pass, right? It's the Lord that opens up the womb yeah, okay. and it's in his timing. And so there's some things we want the womb to open up for. We want the womb to open up for our ministry. We want the womb to open up for a territory. We want the womb to open up for our, um, our next level. Amen. But as we stand, stand in the presence of the Lord, he will give the instruction that is needed for the Bible tells us that, uh, we, that uh, there is a favor with God and there's a favor with man. There's a favor with God and there's a favor with man. And so when those doors are locked, we need favor with God, but we also need favor with man. We need God to move upon man's heart so that the door is open. We see that Jesus said that he is the door. And so in some cases, we see that people are like a door. They're the gatekeepers, right? There's the ones that uh, um, opens up access. They're the ones that shuts down access. And so uh, we need favor with God and favor with man. And in order to do that, it's important that we have a good name. It's important that we have a good name, that we live righteously so that God can go ahead of us. The command of the Lord was already ahead of them. The command of the Lord was already ahead of Joshua and the children of Israel. And so we need God to go ahead of us to begin to put things in place. Uh, but God is also... Uh, waiting on our faith, yes, but also waiting on our character. And so let us know our character be the stumbling block that prevents doors from being opened unto us. Amen. So that wherever we go, that we show ourselves to be one that is friendly. That wherever we go, that we show ourselves to be one that we're doing it unto the Lord. Amen. So that God can work on our behalf. So we will be representation. Okay. And so there's times when we are holding unforgiveness towards people, but God is like, that's the one I'm sending to you. That's the person I'm sending to you. That person is going to open up the doors. And so sometimes there's a prerequisite that we have to forgive and release and let go in order to go through doors. So sometimes we can shut doors for fear. And we can shut doors for unforgiveness. And so we have to always be in a place of being uh, forgiven and being loving, being tender hearted, being kind, because all those things open up the doors of God's heart and will open up the doors of man's heart. Amen. Amen. And in, in John chapter 20, verse 19, prophetess, could you find that? We're going to see that. Jesus yeah. walked through some walls. They Amen. shouted in Jericho and the walls came down. They followed the instructions of God and the walls came down. And and when they were they were they were uh, behind the walls and Jesus came in, walked through the door, walked through the walls even though they're barriers because Jesus life began with God planting him behind closed doors. His, his mom was a virgin. It means the door was shut. They were shut doors. The door wasn't open. But God planted him behind the door. So I've come to tell you today, we have come to tell you that God, God's going to plant you. If some doors are locked, there are some associations, some men, uh, they, they don't want to give you promotion. They don't want, God said it's your time. God said it's your season. But they didn't, don't want to do it. So they have locked themselves up. It could be political parties. It could be political authorities. It could be business people. It could be men and women of God in church, in the hierarchy. There is a, there is a, there, there, there is a wall, there is a, a leadership that you can get into, and God says for your time to get promotion to leadership. But there is a ring, there is a wall that is set up there, and you cannot, I've come to tell you today that God can plant you be, be, behind any barrier, behind any wall, behind anything. You have gone for employment, but the leadership said they do not want you because... Jericho was shut up because of the children of Israel, a specific people, a specific people, 
sometimes because of our nationality, sometimes because of our pigmentation, sometimes because we are believers, they know we are Christians, they lock the doors, they shut it. But I've come to tell you today that God can plant you behind. He can get you behind what man has set up, what science has set up, what human nature set up, God can plant you behind because he is the Lord. Uh, the Bible said the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He is the Lord. He is the owner. He can get you into the job. He can get you into that, into the group. He can get you into that place because he is the ax. He said, I am the door. He can get you in. When human doors, physical doors, human walls, physical walls, mental walls, prejudice walls of prejudice are set up against you, God can get you there. God can get you because he preordained it. He predestined it. And the art is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So I've come to tell you, your day of breakthrough, your hours come. Regardless of what the door is, regardless of what the wall is, God can get the blessing to you. Providence mercy. Amen. So we're in John 14, 14, 14. Uh, you said John chapter 20 and verse 19. It reads, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Amen. They were afraid. And that's, that's why we, we were saying before, fear causes doors to be shut. You're going for the employment, but you're fearful that you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it because fear causes doors to be shut. Fear produces shut doors against Christ. But Christ can go walk through the doors. He can rescue you. He can bless you wherever you are, whatever the condition is. He can bring the blessing. And this is the year of the doors. This is the year of your blessings. This is the year of your breakthrough. This is the year that your family is coming together. This is the year that you're going to move uh, from riches to wealth. This is the year you're going to move from zero to become a, a tremendous entrepreneur. This is it. God has called you to it. He has called you from the point where you are. And he has he already has your name written in his book. He already has your purpose written in his book. The yada for you is already written and is already concluded. And so regardless where you are today, I've come to tell you, there is nothing can hinder you from getting your breakthrough. Even if the doors are shut, even if there are walls, human walls, mental walls, walls of prejudice, walls that are of, of lack, walls of poverty. God can get to you and he can set you behind the doors that were closed. Imagine never before a virgin could give birth. That was the first and the only time. But nothing shall be impossible to him that believe it. You can imagine barren people. Look at Sarah, barren, barren, old and barren. Medical science, science, humanity, mental understanding, the, the custom and tradition of man, the doors were shut and God still make her get pregnant. So regardless, that is the God who we serve, the creator of heaven and earth. He is the one that nothing shall be impossible to him that believe it. Prophet is mercy. So 
Sorry, I've got I've got noise in my background. Amen, amen. I just want to give a few shout outs. I see part of the Shan, um, Janet here in the room. So God bless you, woman. God, it's great to have you here. Uh, Pastor Jennifer, um, Marcia, there's some of you. Minister Rosetta, I'm trying to get a hold of you. <laughs> give me a call um, about an hour after the show. Um, Sister Luslin, thank you for being here. Um, Apostle Kogi, uh, Brother De um, Dewey, it's good to see you all. Pastor Sandra, hey, Apostle, that all the way from New Mexico. Amen. Oh, Pastor Vanessa, good to see you all. Uh, we appreciate you. Amen. I pray that this word is blessing you and is strengthening you, that these doors, these walls are coming down, these barriers that try to hinder you from moving fully in your purpose, fully in your purpose, doors and walls that maybe even you have erected uh, because of inadequacy and feeling insufficient. But because you believe in the word of the Lord, you are holding on to his word that says that you're wonderfully and fearfully made. And therefore you're made in the likeness and the image of God. And therefore you have perfect love cast out all fear. You're walking in the love of God. And there is a key and that is the key. Love is the key that opens up the door, amen? you're not moving in fear. Fear adds torment. And so we praise the Lord that uh, you are walking in freedom today. You're walking in fruitfulness and in freedom. You have your freedom and therefore you're able to increase. The children of Israel was able to increase. They increased in power. They increased in authority. They increased in their reputation of the God that they served because of the Jericho wars coming down. This was an impossible situation, but this was an, a situation that was met by the power and the strength and the force of God and not of man. Even though man was part of the process, we know a shout cannot break down walls. But spiritually, this was the, the power of God, the glory of God that was being manifested. And therefore, the, the, the name of the Lord went out. Okay, the reputation of their God went out and uh, brought fear on those that was in surrounding cities and upon their enemy. Uh, so may the may the fear of the Lord, uh, may people tremble, uh, may the enemy, for we know what we do, we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but may uh, the spirits and the adversary of your enemy, may they tremble because of the presence of the Lord that is backing you. No weapon formed of fashion against you. It will not prosper. We decree and declare that to be so. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, 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 Prophet, as mercy, you can pray for us. Pray for the people. Amen. 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 And so I want to share with you what the Lord just shared with me right now. And so these walls, I just saw the walls being erected. And, uh, uh, and and very specific, uh, the wall is preconceived notions. Pre preconceived notions are just seen as a wall that's hindering the flow. So, Father God, we give you praise. We thank you, O oh God, that you're almighty yes. God, for all knowing God. We thank you, O oh Lord, uh, that you speak to us uh, and that you speak to us not in dark sayings, but you speak to us face to face. Father, we thank you for revealing unto us, O oh God, that even our own mindsets, our preconceived ideas and notions and concepts, it may and have been in the way, that these have become wars that the enemy has used as a stronghold even against us and our purpose and our destiny. But today, oh God, we thank you, oh Lord, that we come in the name of the Lord, that we come in the backing of the Lord, that we come in the might of the Lord. And we declare, oh God, that these notions, these walls, these concepts, even agreements and contracts, oh Father, oh God, we decree and declare that they are broken and that they come down now in the name of Jesus. Where they have been erected, we command them to fall 
fall down and crumble. We command them to fall down into pieces. We command them to lose its strength and its power in the name of Jesus. We release, oh God, the spirit of liberty and the spirit of freedom upon our lives, oh God, that we would hear and see um, exactly what you're saying to us and we will come into agreement, oh Lord. And so we tear down these things, oh God, um, and that they will fall under the obedience of Christ in the name of Jesus, oh God. For a weapon of warfare is not carnal, but it's mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And so, Father, we send the fire. We send the fire of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Man, yes, the fire of the Holy Ghost, oh God. To demolish them, to destroy them, to pull them down. Fire, fire, we command fire of the Lord. Oh, Father God, your word says uh, before your presence goes a consuming fire. Consume, oh Lord, uh, our enemies. Consume the walls uh, of our enemies. Consume every barrier, oh God, every blockage, every hindrance, uh, any exacting, oh God, upon your people, oh God, anything that the enemy is using for leverage, oh God, against your people. We decree and declare, oh God, uh, that it has been broken, that the spell has been broken. The agreements yes. have been broken. The contracts of God have been broken. And no yes, longer Lord. will they be able yes, to Lord. manipulate us, oh God. Yes, because Lord. Of fear, because of scarcity, because of lack of understanding. We break yes, it Lord. now in the name of Jesus. We come out of agreement, oh God. And we, dec- and we decree and declare that we come into agreement with you, oh God. We come into agreement with you and your purpose. And we declare, oh God, that the blood of Jesus secures our purpose and destiny. Our blueprint is secured in the name of yes. Jesus. And yes, so Lord. it shall manifest and we shall walk in it. We shall see it, oh Lord. We shall breathe it in Jesus' name. We thank you for your awesome God, a loving God, a kind God, a nurturing God. And so we ask, oh God, that you vindicate us, oh Lord, that you vindicate us, oh God, and that you would um, compensate us for damages, emotional damages, suffering, financial suffering, financial hemorrhage, Father God, yes. that you vindicate us, oh Lord. And that we will recover all in the name of Jesus. I declare it to be so. Now, yes, Jesus name, checks in the mail, oh Lord. Uh, yes. Replenish, relationships replenish. That uh, our health and healing is has come into place, and we are replenished, oh Lord, uh, that we may increase and bear much fruit. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. You have the victory. Now, prophets, just lead them to, uh, to Christ and them that are torn back for some reason. Lead them to Christ and then we are going to close. Amen. Amen. And so if you're here today and, and you have uh, at one time given your life to Christ and um, you have backslidden and have decided, you know what, this thing ain't for me or the people ain't for me. I want to encourage you today. Jesus is the door. He is the door to your deliverance. He is the way maker and he will cause you to bear fruit. Where where you are barren and things are dried up in your life, I want to invite you to Jesus. I want to invite you to um, transforming um, your life in him. Amen. And uh, activating your purposes. So just say this very simple, very um, quick prayer with me this morning. And, and that is, dear Heavenly Father, I come to you as a son. I ask that you would uh, cleanse my heart and purify my heart. As this morning, I make a decision. As I make a decision this morning to receive Jesus Christ. To receive Jesus Christ. As my personal Lord. As my Savior and Lord. And Savior. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my heart, Lord. Come into my Come. heart, Lord. Um, and I receive you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you said that prayer, listen, all heaven rejoices. We're celebrating with you here and in heaven. And we want to say, uh, get into a Bible-believing church. We are such 
and we have services. In fact, this Friday, today's Wednesday, we have a service on Friday at 7.30 p.m. And uh, we have a special two-day weekend service. Sunday service starts at 10 a.m. And so we're looking forward to having you at um, 9120-146th Street, Jamaica, Queens, and New York. Amen. Amen. And so DM us if you have made a decision to dedicate yourself back to the Lord, or if this is your first time receiving salvation. Amen. We want to support you on this journey, and uh, we want to get you strengthened. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. So we also have, like I said, we have a two-day weekend. So I want to invite you. Okay. I want to invite you. This weekend is Apostles Celebration Weekend. We've got a two-day weekend. Saturday and Sunday, we are celebrating him. We have two uh, dynamic preachers, uh, prophets in the house, uh, Bishop Kibi Otu and also Kwesi Adutum, uh, both are bishops and sons of um, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. And this is going on this Saturday, Saturday at 4 p.m. Amen, Saturday at 4 p.m. And uh, so you want to be in the venue. I cited the Cathedral of Praise and Worship, 105 Barbie Street, Brooklyn. We're going to be in Brooklyn at 4 p.m. And you can get your tickets for the mail at www.apostlejamesduncan.com. Get your tickets. Uh, the event is free, but uh, for, for the mail, um, get your tickets. We want to fellowship with you. Now, tickets are limited. So uh, run and get your ticket. Amen. Amen. And so this is going to be a powerful time. Uh, we are to give honor to whom honor is due. And so we want to make sure that we are appreciating our dear apostle. His birthday, actual birthday, is actually on 1010. Okay, it's on 1010. But on the 7th, we're celebrating. Come to bless the man of God. Come to uh, be a blessing. Let your, presence be a, let your presence be a blessing. We want to see you in the building amen i know many of you are coming from near and far people are getting their tickets people is traveling in and so we want to thank you uh for coming amen it's going to be a glorious time amen we want to tell you look i'm looking forward to see you shake your hand and and uh do whatever god said to do some of you might even give a get a prophetic word god bless you and so we look forward to you, amen. A few more days from now, we celebrate and thanking God for what he has done. Raise me up from a small place, a small nation in Guyana, South America, and dispatch me the nations of the earth to carry his gospel, carry the gospel of the kingdom. And many people, they'll be coming from different places, so join with us, amen. I got a report from some in Guyana, they're flying in, coming from Guyana some people coming from uh from from europe from london they're coming in so come and be a part of what god is doing if you can't be there say I, you can send a a, a a note send a thanksgiving send a, a, a offering whatever you want to do amen but you want to thank god and rejoice for what he has done praise god is 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 over a year plus that my wife is in is in heaven with him Amen. Praise God. So we want to say, God bless you. We love you. And Jesus loves you. And Jesus is Lord. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.